with us is the Vermont Senator, the Democratic presidential candidate, Bernie Sanders. Uh, you're, you've, you like this deal, this Iran nuclear deal. Donald Trump says it's the worst possible deal. A lot of Republicans, they hate it. Uh, are you okay with it? Because they're going to get $100 billion, the Iranians, and they can do with that whatever they want. Look, this is not the deal that I would write. It's not the deal that you would write. But you know, Wolf, well, I get very tired of hearing the rants and ravings of Republicans who apparently have not forgotten the lessons of Iraq and Afghanistan. I voted against the war in Iraq, and I think that war will go down in history as one of the worst foreign policy blunders uh, in the modern history of our country. And do you think that that negates Hillary Clinton because she voted for I, I, That's not my point here. The point is to take us to where we are today. If you do not negotiate an agreement, remember, this is not an American agreement. This is with five other countries plus Iran. Tough negotiating. If we, our goal must be to make sure that Iran does not have a nuclear weapon. Everyone agrees on that. It will be a disaster for the region, disaster for Israel, increase the arms race in that area. What Republicans keep ignoring is the cost of war. If you don't negotiate an agreement, what's your alternative? If you were president of the United States and they violated the agreement, the Iranians, with the military option, the U.S. use of military force against Iran to prevent it from becoming a nuclear power beyond the table. Of course it would be on the table. Military option is always on the table, but it must be the last option. You know, and I get really upset. I'm the former chairman of the Veterans Committee, and I learned a little bit about the cost of war of not only the 6,700 brave men and women who died in Iraq and Afghanistan, the 500,000, 500,000 who came home with PTSD and traumatic brain injury, the $4 trillion we spent on those wars. What the president is trying to do, and I agree with him, is to do everything that we can to achieve our goal of Iran not having a nuclear weapon without going to war. So so Period. what do you say to your critics? I'm talking about Democratic critics who say, you know what, You're, he's really just a socialist pacifist. He voted even in 1991 against the, the Operation Desert Storm to liberate Kuwait. I am not a pacifist. You know, I voted for the war in Afghanistan. I voted to support uh, President Clinton trying to deal with ethnic cleansing in Kosovo. Sometimes military force is what is needed. But what a great nation is about, the most powerful military on earth is about is doing everything that we can to resolve international conflict without a war and I do get very upset at people who are so prepared to send other people's kids into that war so I support what the president is trying to do if it does not work if Iran cheats we can rescind the uh, provision on sanctions military option is always a possibility but let us do everything that we can to achieve our goal without going to war. The White House now says the president has directed the administration to make preparations next year to admit 10,000 Syrian refugees into the United States. You with them on that? Yes, I am. Uh, look, you have a humanitarian crisis, which is heartbreaking. Uh, people are leaving Syria. They're leaving Iraq, by the way, uh, and with the clothes on their back. And I think this is a European issue. By the way, I think it is an issue that Saudi Arabia and some of the other wealthy countries in that region should also embrace. You know, they're part of the cause of the problem. They should take some of the refugees, so should the United States. How would you, as president of the United States, destroy, defeat ISIS? I don't think anyone has a magical answer, uh, but this is what I do believe. I do not believe that the United States can or should do it alone. You know, I get a little bit tired of countries like Saudi Arabia, who border on ISIS, uh, telling President Obama, please send combat troops in, but we don't want to get our hands dirty. You got very wealthy, and Saudi Arabia, among other things, has the third largest military budget in the world. I think you need the countries in the region to be leading the effort uh, with the support of the United States and the other uh, wealthy, powerful uh, Western countries uh, throughout the world.